Welcome back. Now, as we head closer to the 2023 general election, some individuals have begun indicating their interest and unveiling their bid for the presidential position. You may say it is too early, but the truth is that in politics, it is actually not too early. The current president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria and member of the Presidential Advisory Committee, Sam Ohuabungwa, is one of the first aspirants of the Southeast extraction, making public his decision to run for the office. In furtherance of his presidential ambition for 2023, the renowned pharmacies has also floated a political platform, the New Nigeria Group, under which he hopes to run. He now joins me on the program to talk about his ambition and, of course, how he intends to go about actualizing it. Mazi Sam Ohabunga, thank you very much uh, for joining us on the program. Thank you, DG. I'm glad to be invited. Happy New Year. We haven't spoken face-to-face. -face. Exactly. We haven't spoken face-to-face. -face. I have had, um, I've had a series of interviews with you over the years, you know, quite a number of times. Uh, but this is the very first time I'll be talking to you about serious politics. Uh, and um, this time, the subject of that politics is you. Uh, it, it's quite surprising, uh, to, to be candid. I, I was surprised... When you made that announcement that you would be running for uh, the top office, uh, of, for the top job of this country now, the presidency of this country in 2023, I, I remember that some time ago when we were having a conversation, uh, I, I did ask you, maybe not why, why, why you're not, I, I think I asked you why you were not in politics and you said you were not cut out for it, that you're younger, it's your younger brother's thing. So, so why have you decided, why have you now changed your mind and uh, thrown your hat into the ring? Well, thank you. Uh, I'm sure that those of us who are familiar with Christian theology will know somebody called Paul of Tarsus. <laughs> and while he was on his way, he was called Saul to persecute people. Uh, God met him on the road and he became Paul. I guess this is similar to my case. Uh, again, permit me again to refer us to the holy book. There was also another man called um, um, Jonah, who was asked to head to Nineveh. Uh, but for reasons best known to him, he decided to go to Tashis. And then uh, until he was swallowed in the belly of a fish before he re redirected himself. I've used these two analogies to show that I've run away. It's a deliberate act to run away from politics for this number of years, hoping that my role was that of advisory, advocacy, uh, organize summits, organize some, uh, conferences, write books, write commentaries, appear on television, offering opinion, free consultancy, and hoping that some people will run with this and make our country a better place a globally competitive nation, a nation we can all be proud of, a nation that works for all, a nation that will give each individual uh, a place and membership that does not subject him to any feeling of second-class citizenship or being maligned, maltreated, or in any way misjudged. Uh, but, you know, each year we, we are not getting much better. Sometimes we make a few steps into the, to the, to the, into the future, make some progress, then we seem to retrogress. So, so, uh, uh, so essentially, it came to the what, point what, what you're it saying clear. essentially is that, look, you've made several suggestions on how to turn things around in this country in the past. You've made several suggestions to not just the current government, even to governments of the past, but, but because, uh, you know, your suggestions have not been taken or implemented, you have decided to run to, to implement your own vision for this country. You are very correct. In 2010, God gave me the opportunity to write a book called uh, uh, Nigeria Need for the Evolution of a New Nation. And I was just speaking in that book that we needed to create a new vision, uh, a new country that will be united by a vision that can mobilize and harness all the resources of this nation to create a country where everybody can live in unity and in happiness, in, content, in contentment, and where everybody can be duly and fully occupied in economic activity so that we can move our country from being a perpetually third world country to a first world. 
And it, it, it's not happened. Uh, it permit me to be specific. I, I presented three copies of that book to, to a president that was in power then. I gave him one in his office. I gave him one in Abuja. We had a meeting in Lagos. I gave him a third one. He said, Master Sam, you give him this book. This is the third one. I say, yes. The reason I gave it, I'm giving you the third one is that I, it doesn't seem like you have read it. And if you've read it, I haven't seen any of these things happening. It's true life. Uh, this was way back. Um, and so you're right. We, we, we have stood back thinking our policies were for other people, thinking there were people who were created to come and repair the nation and build it up. Ours were just to sit behind in our comfort zones and pontificate and, uh, and, and, and suggest. But it looks to be that we need to do more than that. We need to come to the ring and put our hearts and be able to see uh, that we can affect those changes. Because to be sincere with you, some of the changes we've always asked for are common sense. But, but let, me, let me ask you common this. Common sense, like we're saying. Before we talk about those changes, yeah. Mazi, let, let me ask you this. Yeah. Are you really yeah. serious about this or you're just doing this to make a statement? Uh, Deji, you've known me now. At my age and time, I, I don't come out just for the fun. I'm not seeking, um, seeking um, uh, uh, popularity or to hear my name mentioned. You've interviewed me severally, even at great convenience to you and to your crew. But you've always waited. At that time, I was not running for any office. But you are satisfied with my, my content, what I brought to your show. And therefore, I am running for real. Now, the, the, the reason I asked you this is because as we speak today, you do not, I, I know that, other than the political movement that you have launched, you do not belong to uh, any political party, none that I'm aware of at least. Um, you, 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 you've never run for any political office, so to speak. Uh, this is actually the first time you would be doing this. And... Um, you know, you, you take a look at all of this. I mean, you consider all of this, and you also consider the fact that in terms of political structure, especially with the way politics is run in this country, you, you don't have it. So, you know, when you put all of these things on the table and people look at them, the, the conclusion they tend to get is that, look, this individual can be serious. He probably is running to make a, a, a statement, so to speak. Well, I don't blame you, DG, if you share the views or anybody else who shares that view. It's, it's, it, it does often happen. Uh, people on their right, on their right. And because we're accustomed uh, to a particular way of doing things, when the new ways come, we, we, we uh, easily ignore or do not notice. Nigeria is about to change. All the prayers we have prayed, all the, all the, all the things we've spoken about in the past, I believe the time to see them happen is now. And when things need to happen, strange things begin to come. There was a man called Chief M. Abiola. I'm not aware he ran for any office, but he was today elected, posthumously uh, honored as uh, the a president that ought to have been, but that wasn't. Uh, and there are cases of people who came to politics the first time at the highest level. Donald Trump, I didn't think ran for any office before he became one. There have been examples. Uh, but the truth is also that I belong to a political party. That's the truth. So you may not know because I have not advertised it. So, so let me ask you, Thirdly, which political party I, do you belong to? Because I'm, I'm hearing that actually for the first time. Be because yeah, these I'm individuals you mentioned, Abiola, Donald Trump and the others, yeah. they actually belong to political yeah. parties. Yeah. Yes, I belong to one, but I'm not willing to. When we get to the point where we're talking about elections. We are now selling our idea. We have a vision which we are selling under the auspices of the uh, New Nigeria Group. New Nigeria Group is not a political party. It's a, a social political movement. We think but, that but the greatest challenge we have in this But why would it be difficult for you, sir, to nation, disclose the political party you belong to? Because, I mean, it, it just would make sense. You're running for the office of president and you know... Um, as we speak today, the Constitution does not allow for independent candidacy. So, and you, you've actually confirmed that you have a political party. So why not just go on and announce yeah. uh, the name of your political party so that people can also, especially those who believe in you and your ideas, uh, can identify with your political yeah. party as well? 
I, our focus is to sell our vision, what we represent. Because you know, uh, Deji, that there's no difference between the political parties in Nigeria. People go from one to the other overnight. They don't even consult their constituencies. And we clap for them, we vote for them. People are not principled. I'm not that kind of person. What, why, why I, I can't say that by the time I take a decision, I've taken a decision. I'm not going to go forward. I, I belong to one political party. I may run on that political party. I may run on another political party. I may run on another platform. I were working together with God under his advice and, and, and direction where we will exactly run. So we don't want to tell you one today. Tomorrow we tell you another one. That is part of the thing we want to fight in this country. Some bit of principled uh, politics. So, so, so the, the, Decide the way where you is. want to be and be. So at the appropriate time, I will announce it. People do go from one party to another in this nation. And, and people still uh, uh, clap for them. The reason I don't want to do so, if you want to know, is that I, 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 am, I am truly being deliberate. That the moment I announce my political platform, I'm not likely going to come back to tomorrow and tell you. So, so in story. any case, so, so what, what, what it means, what, me. what that means is that you're leaving it sort of open now, so that um, if other political parties are interested in, in your candidacy, they, they are free to come and adopt you, so to speak. Maybe any of the big political parties. Uh, that's one way of looking at it, but that's really not my motivation. I'm not coming to this for the fun. It's not just struggle for power. Again, I'm not just coming to make a point. I'm coming to properly lead a change. And that change has a foundation. It must start from a group of Nigerians who believe in Nigeria, who believe that Nigeria is possible, that a new Nigeria is possible, that we can take this country from a third world to a first world, that we can make this country a livable place for everyone. We are looking for Nigerians who believe in this mission. That's what we are doing. At the appropriate time, we need a political platform to, to, to do the election, and that will happen either one way or the other, including the way you've suggested. But that's not our idea. The idea is let people hear about our vision, what we want to represent, not just because we want power. Many people come to power, they don't know what to do. Many of them are reluctant. To, they, 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 somebody forces them into power, and they start grouping in the dark. Or a group of people get together and tell them what to do, and they take IOUs. When they come to power, they start paying the IOUs. This is the genesis of all the challenges we've heard. I am coming prepared because I've been preparing myself several years back. Really not sure when that call will come. They say you prepare yourself, then an opportunity presents, and then you say you, you will then have success. I've been preparing in the infinite creator, God himself has been preparing me through all the positions he has allowed me to pass all the experiences in the private, in the public, in the NGO sectors for this time. So this is the full expression of all the preparation. All right. My focus is on a vision. My focus is on uh, uh, motivating Nigerians to tell them that a new Nigeria is possible, a future is possible, a great country is possible. All right, Mazi, let, let's just take a quick break and uh, we'll be right back to talk about other issues as well, you know, relating to your uh, ambition now. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. On Deji360, we don't just ask the questions. What is wrong with amending the constitution the way uh, the, the National Assembly members have been doing it? We seek answers. The constitution is constituent. Our problem is not um, lack of laws. Our problem is lack of the willpower to implement our laws. Answers that provide clarity. While we negotiate, we should try to make it a point that the girls must be complete. The clarity you need to make informed judgment so that you can make the right decision and take action. People are saying it is you politicians that are responsible for this, that you are the reason oh. why this is happening. All these dollars that call themselves governors in this country? I wish we had people like Tony at the National Assembly. God forbid that I go to join that uh, family. Really? Digi 360. Providing clarity to issues. Welcome back. And if you've just joined us, we're talking with... Uh, a presidential candidate now, or presidential aspirant for the 2023 general election, Mazi Sam Ohuabunga. Mazi, thank you very much uh, for staying with us on the program. Now, uh, 
there's been this long clamor for the presidency to shift to the southeast of the country, where you incidentally come, uh, you incidentally come from. Uh, what, what's your take on it? Well, I, I support those who make that proposition. There's this book I wrote, I told you I wrote in 2010, Nigeria Need for the Evolution of a New Nation. I, I also supported that, that every section of the country, every zone, should be given an opportunity, every geopolitical opportunity to present the president at least once. In that case, it, it creates equity and um, a sense of belonging. It's a way of healing the divisions mm -hmm. in the country, especially looking at what has happened since the war ended. And that it some, some, if it was a sacrifice, uh, Nigeria needed to make that sacrifice. But I, I also know that it will promote unity and um, uh, you know, togetherness. Uh, so I support it. Uh, but to be sincere to you, that's not why I'm, in, I'm yes. running. I'm running because I, am, I believe that I am competent. I believe that I have the character. I believe that I have the appropriate courage to make a difference. But that I happen to be from the Southeast, maybe an adver uh, uh, added bonus if Nigerians are willing to buy into this need to have uh, uh, the Southeast given opportunity. I mean, I, I can actually vouch for your qualities, no doubt about that. But let me ask you this. Are you not disappointed that um, as we speak today, apart from yourself, no other politician from the Southeast has actually come out to announce their ambition? And we know there are quite a number of them from that region who are interested in running. Are you not surprised that they've actually not come out? And not only have they not come out, they, they, they've not been speaking, so to speak, or on this issue of uh, zoning the presidency to the southeast in 2023. You know, one of the core values in the New Nigeria group is what we call freedom and liberty. We want to have a country of free people, a country of freedoms, where people are free to express their opinions, where people are free to think, where people are free to relate to each other without fear. There's a siege mentality, and so people are, are afraid uh, to say anything or show the ambition because somebody may not be happy with it. They are looking for permission, somebody to concur with them. Well, that's their view and that's the way we have come. Um, people are not bold to state something they, they get, they, 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 to state their convictions. And that's why they change. They change color, they change, pass, they change views, they change stance with the slightest uh, to toss of the coin. Uh, I, I believe that that's part of the reason some of them are bidding their time. They are looking up to one master. They are looking up to one godfather. They are looking up to somebody. I don't seek anybody's permission. The only permission I needed was that from God. Otherwise, I have to state my view because I'm a bona fide citizen of this country. I have one vote. You have one vote. I love this nation as much as everybody else. Nobody loves the nation. Nobody owns the country more than anybody. I don't need anybody else's permission just the permission of God and the agreement of my family. The moment that is sorted out, that's why I decided to begin to, to do what I'm doing. And I do hope that uh, in future, uh, some good people will come out. What we do not want is just people coming out because they have the money or they believe they have some political uh, 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 experience. I'm talking that's about money. I mean, I know you. <laughs> you're not a money bag. I mean, you, you're not poor either. Um, <laughs> By any stretch <laughs> of imagination. And, and I know one thing that, you know, running for a political office in this country, especially for the top job of this country, for the presidency, requires a lot of money. And uh, timing is also important. I'm, I'm just wondering whether you would not burn yourself out before the actual politician begins, uh, may, maybe sometime next year, because you, you're doing this quite early. And um, I'm also wondering whether you, you've got the finances to go, uh, the, the, you know, to, to, do, to do all of this, go the long haul. The, the, you know, the election is two years or less from now. February something 2023 will mm. be the election. So we have less than two years. We're already in February to, and I say, a new entrant into the political environment. We need this time, as you just said. To people to understand and ask me these kind of questions they are asking me you know because many people know me in diverse ways in different places chairman of economic summit group 
president of NECA, past chairman man, uh, and all that, uh, Nigeria, America, they know me in the private sector, leadership, NGO sector. They've seen me play advisory supportive roles. Uh, some even think I'm an economist. They don't even know I'm a pharmacist, but of course I've gone through uh, business schools. So the, uh, the time we are starting is to let people know us and also know what we are bringing. We are mm. not just one of those died in the world politicians who are coming with something fresh, something new. We are focusing this country on a vision. And we're going to make sure that every Nigerian knows his part in this vision. And every Nigerian is encouraged and motivated to pursue that vision so that we can become a global player. We can become a first world. Uh, and with the first world, we'll come with uh, all the problems we are facing. Because it's where you put your vision that you walk towards to. It's where your sight is that you put effort to. And what you can see, you can achieve. We know there were countries that were at the same level with us in the 60s, they are first world, Singapore, uh, Japan, China, you know, some of them were even lower than where we were. But today they are global players. And I think if we stretch our imaginations and do the right things, we'll get there because we have endowments. We have natural endowment, we have physical endowment, we have intellectual endowment. Uh, Dubai is a desert, but it has become a, a first world. Uh, Japan has no... Uh, solid, no natural endowments. Singapore has no, nat the only natural endowment in Singapore is a port. They have transformed shipping and transshipment into a major earning and have become a global economic capital, financial capital of the world. Nigeria can do much better than this because we are better endowed, great climate, great, great uh, solid cross, cross, head cross. We have solid minerals, we have gaseous minerals, we have liquid minerals. It is just to harness this, to provide the appropriate leadership that can motivate every single Nigerian to be the best of what God has created him to be. This is a country that destroys talent, doesn't respect talent. When Nigerians leave this country, they become stars because they get into an environment that rewards talent, rewards effort, rewards creativity and innovation. Here, nobody even cares. Instead, they will even repress you and, 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 and take the gas out of you. So that's what we want to do. What we want to do is very simple, Deji. You're a very, very wonderful broadcaster. You've tried to set up your own business. If I am president tomorrow, we will have visited you. Somebody from the Ministry of Telecommunications or Communications or Industry will have come to you, seen your talent, what, where you have come, all the way from channels, television, and all that way back, and where you are today. We will have come to talk to you. How can we make you a global a global, a global player. How can you compete with Am and Paul? How can you compete with uh, um, uh, um, all the great um, broadcasters like you? That's what we're going to do. Right. We we'll recognize talent. We we'll use national resources to support that talent to become global players so that we can compete with the rest of the I world. Mean, very great ideas you have. The only challenge is that I just hope Nigerians would um, relegate money to the background, you know, relegate some other sentiments as well to the background and consider the ideas that um, the presidential candidates will be putting forward when the time comes. Did you have, we have followed money for long. I think every Nigerian has come to the conclusion that this money politics has not paid us. Every, most Nigerians, let me not say every, most Nigerians have come to that conclusion. In this little time I've been in this business, I've gone north, I've gone south, I've gone east, I've gone west. I meet ordinary folks, I meet the youth, I meet all those who collect the 5,000s and 2,000s and whatever to change the opinion. They are tired because they've gone through this cycle many times. Promises are made. Then people come to office and deny the promises they made. They don't well, keep it sir, down. See, I, I, the man I, who if, voted if them me, in. I think it's easier said. You, you know, uh, sometimes what these people tell you is what, actually what? not the reality when the time comes. Because I have also... You know, covered well, maybe, elections in this maybe country, and it's something you, I really they, understand. They, but let's just hope and pray that they, what, what you have said now actually comes to pass, be, they, because that's they, actually they, the they, problem, the biggest they, problems, they, uh, uh, the biggest problem, I should say. The Do you know? Yeah, I agree. But you know, everything has a beginning mm. and has an end. Everything. That's true. The world changes. Every kingdom runs to its maximum and falls. Every trend has an end. Navdak says every product has an expiry date. <laughs> I want to inform you that Nigeria is, uh, is coming to the end of this behavior. It's not just being optimistic. Did you ever believe there was going to be an answers protest by youth, unorganized, nobody funding them as such, and they maintained well, protests for weeks? 
Did you ever believe it will happen in this country? Things are changing, guys. So I can assure you that Nigerians, yes, they may take your money, but they still know that all the money they've taken in the past haven't brought them anywhere nearer where they want to go. And they are going to be more selective in deciding who to take money from and what to do right. with that money. Mazi, um, we just have to wait until towards the election in 2023. <laughs> uh, but w what I can just say is to all right. all wish right. you the best of luck. And uh, I, I, I hope and pray that... Um, you know, you see this race to the very end. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Thank you, DJ. Uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll work together and you see that once in the life of a country, there's a major change uh, and when, God's, when prayers have been heard. Thank you very much. All right. That's how much we can take on the program this week. We thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>